Welcome back inside the Now Morning Show. Now on Tuesday, some dolphins was washed ashore at Stobie. Let me give you a little bit more information before we get into the conversation. Check out this. Beachgoers and lifeguards were caught by surprise on Tuesday when they witnessed a pot of dolphins which swam ashore at the Store Bay Beach facility in Tobago. TTT News spoke with lifeguard 2, Kester Kent, who was on duty and became part of the rescue team. So you see, um, we realized that there was some dolphin on the far end of the beach, all right? So myself and patrol captain and Levan Nizama we would have gone on to assist the um, dolphins to take them back out to shore. However, there was beach goers and patrons who was, you know, assisted as well. So it could have been about 10 dolphins that was on the beach. And what happened is that we don't know what would have caused the dolphins to come ashore. But however, within half an hour to 45 minutes, we came together as a team and, you know, they went back out to sea. Mr. Kent indicated he never saw such an occurrence at the Store Bay Beach facility. First time in history, I would have seen dolphin come ashore. Well, usually we saw the dolphin, you know, like approximately 100 meters from shore outside the building area. But today, this was something I never have seen before. CTT News spoke with acting director in the Department of Marine Resources and Fisheries, Garth Otley, who explained if the pilot in the dolphin pod is injured, it will beach itself and others will follow. He added navigational challenges may cause this or when bad weather is approaching, dolphins beach themselves. Mr. Otley noted further investigations will be conducted. All right, so we get the story there, and this morning, to further the conversation, I want to welcome the PRO of the Trinidad and Tobago Marine Mammal Stranded Network, Dr. Wade Sukaran. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I mean, we saw the report there, you heard the story, and we heard some of the reasons given, or proposed reasons. Do you agree with these reasons as to reasons why the dolphins would have beached themselves? I can't say I agree, because because the, the truth is we we... we often never really know mm. and the whole point of this stranding network is to try to get people who are trained to examine these kind of situations so we can get an idea of the causes and in in this particular instance the people from the network were, weren't able to get there before the dolphins were put back out into the sea ah uh, what sort of assessment would the network do to be able to, to determine the causes of the of the beaching well, first of all, when we, when we come to a situation like that, we look at the animals themselves, and we, 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 most of us are trained as veterinarians mm -hmm. or in marine mammal sciences. So we're, remember, these are mammals just like us. So we're actually looking for signs of disease. We're looking for signs of injury. Um, we, actually, we can actually do a physical examination on the animals. But even before that, because a lot of the times the problem is we don't often get to the site before the public are there. And mm. it's, just, it's just natural that the public want to help yeah. and get the animals back out to sea. So the, the most important thing to, to get across to the public is that you have to remember that these are mammals like us. They're air breathing, right? So sometimes when a marine mammal comes up onto the shore, they might be doing it for their own benefit. Mm. Whereas we instinctively think that this is like a fish yeah. out of the water that needs to go back into the water. So for instance, that day, um, we have reports of a, a diver called me and said that he had seen three orcas in the water around the same time. You also saw an illegal fishing net ac across the bay. All of these are reasons why, they, I, I can't say that's the reason why For it sure, happened, yeah. but these are speculations as to what may have happened. It right. could be that putting those dolphins back at that particular time might not be the best thing. So when we have to assess the situation, we have to assess the health of the animals, we're looking at the tides, we're looking at everything we know about that era mm -hmm. before we can decide what's best to be done. What's interesting is that I, I also saw, well, in the report, they said that it, they spent a, a solid 30 to 45 minutes in the exercise trying to put them back in because oftentimes when they put them back in the water, they beach themselves again. Yes. And that would be another telling sign as to they want to do this for a reason. Well, it could be that they want to do it for a reason, but it could also be a sign that, that like for instance, somebody mentioned that if one of them is injured, yeah. they, because they've, as these, these dolphins that we saw from the photos I saw are Atlantic spotted dolphin. So these are dolphins that are very common in our waters, mm -hmm. but those, that particular species, 
They're very gregarious. They like Trinidadians. They love to get together. They love to <laughs> lime. They love to. They're social groups, right? Hence, they know what does. Makes sense. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it's Store Bay. You know, exactly. One of, one of the best places to live. Right. So, so in a case like this, it could be that one particular dolphin has a problem, and the others are mm -hmm. are responding to that. Again, all of these are things we weren't able to examine yet. And in many cases of strandings, the truth is sometimes we never really know. So you might get a, one animal that strands. It may even, it may even die in, in that situation. Even that is very useful to us because we then take the body, we do a post-mortem, we look for, for signs of disease. Mm -hmm. And like in a number of the strandings we had over the years, melon-headed whales have often stranded in Trinidad waters. And the pathology results, the necropsies have, have um, identified a parasite mm -hmm. that goes from the guts of the animal into the brain, damages the brain, and they become disoriented and they can't swim. So that's an example of how even a dead animal is of use, of, yeah. is of use to us. But, but would you be able to determine uh, where that parasite would be hosted, I guess, in terms of waters or wherever they would have yeah, picked it's, it up? Yeah, it's quite, it's a common, and many animals actually, many marine mammals often have these parasites anyway, and it doesn't cause harm. Mm -hmm. But if an animal becomes stressed or becomes diseased or becomes weak in any way, then the parasite can take over and cause that problem. So the parasite is actually found in other, remember the thing about marine mammals, mm -hmm. there's another useful thing about marine mammals, is they, you know, <laughs> Little fish are eaten by bigger fish, right. and <laughs> bigger fish eat them, right? So the marine mammals are at the top of the chain, especially right. the orcas that somebody mentioned they may have seen in Tobago waters. They are at the very top of the chain. And we saw some in Trinidad waters as well. Yeah, last that week. was reported as well. Yeah. But it is common, right? it's not uncommon. We do have those things in our waters, but what's, what is not so common is people actually seeing them right. and coming that close. So orcas, for instance, are at the top of the chain. And what happens with marine mammals is that anything that they're eating lower down, whether it's pollutants, toxins, things like that, it gets concentrated as it comes up the chain. So these marine mammals are often, we call them sentinels. In other words, these are like markers of how good our environment is. So mm -hmm. when we start seeing a lot of animals stranding, we see marine mammals in distress. It's an, usually an indication that something isn't right in our environment, mm -hmm. and we become very concerned because we want to find out like what's causing these abnormal changes. I mean, climate change is just one of the big things well, too, right? I was about to say, you know, we have so many changes that we have no control over that are happening. I saw that there's bleaching going on in the corals in Tobago as yes. well. So there's a whole bunch of different changes that have been happening in the environment. Like we said, climate change causing a lot of these changes that we have no control over. So what advice would you give to people who happen to be at the beach and they see a stranded animal or a beached animal, a beached mammal, what, what suggestion? What should their step be, if not to go and immediately try and help? Well, we do want them to help. Mm. The question is we want them to help, but we want them to be guided in the help. And the good thing about 2023 is almost everybody has a cell phone mm -hmm. and everybody could get onto the internet quickly. So just remember the Trinidad and Tobago Marine Mammal Stranding Network. But even before, before they, they, can, they can do that, the first person to contact would be the authority on the beach. The wildlife authorities, which is usually the forestry division of Trinidad or the forestry division in Tobago, mm -hmm. they're the first people who have to give us permission to, to do something to with the, the animals. Sites, yeah. But once you get onto any authority, the way our network is set up, it's, an, it's a, a number of institutions, which, in, which the most important one is the wildlife authority of the country. Mm -hmm. Once you get onto that, to those numbers, once you get onto anybody, um, the, we have a number which is 4814838, but there's also a poster on our Facebook page which has a, a, a list of numbers, whether it's the Wildlife Authority, whether it's your local police station, whether it's the Coast Guard. Once any of those people get, or whether it's the ODPM, once any of them get the number, mm -hmm. the network is activated. Somebody will be on the phone to you in, in minutes okay. if you do that. And then we'll simply tell you what to do. So here's just quickly what not to do, right? Mm -hmm. So what you don't want to do is is what we saw in that video, right? Remember, these are wild animals. They're not pets. They're not. Most of them have probably never even been in contact with a human being. Mm -hmm. So when they're in a situation like that, we don't know if they're ill, we don't know if they're injured, or we don't know if they're afraid. They're very strong. The tail of that dolphin, just just flapping like that, could throw a child, you know, meters Miles. away. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It could do a lot of damage to people, and this has been done. They bite as well. Mm -hmm. right? They bite in defense, or they bite in. They could bite out of fear. So one is injury, and so you don't want to get close to animals like that unless, but you want to be able to observe. Secondly, you don't want to get too close to the blowhole. The mm. blowhole is like, 
for them is like our nostrils. Right. They breathe, right? And it's like a cough. If an animal is sick and, and, and air comes up through the blowhole, your face is close you to You get that. the disease then. Yeah, there are diseases, there are viruses, there are bacteria. Then we have COVID-20 and we don't want that. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so you want to stay away from things like that. So you, want, so you don't want to do that. Also, you don't want to drag an animal by the tail right. and pull it backwards. That's the one I saw and I thought I felt like it was weird. Yeah. So what, 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 how should they attempt to get the animal back in the water if they're doing that? Well, first of all, we don't really want the public trying to get them back into the all water. Right. That animal may be drowning and we don't want to do it. So the first step really is to just keep the animal comfortable. Remember, that animal can stay, they breathe air, right? Right. So you just want them to stay in the water and just be there and be our, be our eyes and ears, tell us what's going on, and then we may tell you how to move it. Mm -hmm. But there are ways to move the animal and that's, that should really be by the time the authorities come in. We float the animals, we keep them born. We, we protect ourselves, we use gloves, and, and there are ways that we can actually move them back into the water. Mm -hmm. But before that, to be honest, what we want to do is assess the animal. So you want uh, uh, somebody who understands the biology or a veterinarian to see whether this animal is, is safe to go back into the water or not. Dr. Sukaran, thank you so much for joining us this morning and for sharing this little bit of knowledge so that we have an idea as to the first steps that should be taken. As far as I can see, the first step is call the authorities. Yes. And then we go take it from and there. And you'll find that on our Facebook page. Exactly. So head across the Trinidad and Tobago Marine Mammal Stranded Network. They have a Facebook page and you can get the poster, get all the information, save the phone number so you'll know exactly who to call if you happen to be by the beach and you see an animal that happens to be stranded or Anyway, you see a stranded animal, give them a call and they'll be able to come and sort it out. We'll take a quick break and come back with more on the Now Morning Show. I think your birthday is actually up next. Stick around.